Okay, so I just have to try to um, wrap this up quickly and neatly. I don't want to make this huge length thing, but I like. I feel it. I just need to remember what the Lord um, showed me yesterday, and I just I'm so blown away. Like I, I kind of don't even know. Sometimes I just get caught up wondering how He chooses us to work through, like just the magnitude of the God of all creation who designed it and who put it into place and who spoke it. And he talks to us and he uses us like, who are we that we get to have this? Like, I don't know. Um, so uh, I've been feeling this like, I don't know. Uh, okay, I'm just going to try to just step into this and own this without caring. It, um, I have known. I have known um, <laughs> what I see when the Lord shows me things. Um, and, it, okay, trying to get over myself and just spit this out because it just doesn't even, it, it's just too much. <laughs> But it's not too much. It's perfect. So here's the thing. Um, I see shifts. I see understandings of how movements of people, um, what's going on in the world. I, I started recognizing that that's what it was. Uh, I don't know, eight years ago, I think about eight years ago. I'm not exactly sure. Um, I was typing prayer requests at our old church when it really became clear. And I started seeing um, patterns of things happening with people and getting an understanding from the Lord about kind of basically weather patterns. That's the best way I know how to put it into view about this is what's going on. People think it's personal. Nope, this is happening here. Spiritually speaking, this has happened here. This is a demonic thing. Like it just was an understanding. Um, and it's a filter through which he shows me a lot of things. So um, the last few months, I'm telling you, I it's been torment like I've never understood, but not torment that has brought me into anxiety or panic um, which I, for the first time in my life, truly experienced this year. I've never experienced it like I've heard about it, but I did. Like, that's for another time. But that's not what this is. The torment that I've been feeling, it's been mental. Um, like, literally every time my kids leave the door uh, to go somewhere or just Jason or anything, I have these thoughts in the back of my head of somebody's going to shatter their skull. Um there's going to be a horrific accident. Like all of those things, those worries that we internalize, we're like, I'm such a worry. I'm not, uh, or I like, you know, I just think these thoughts, but the difference is I'm not thinking them people. Um, people. <laughs> no, that's not the difference. The difference is I recognize that I am not a worrier. That is not who I am. So it's been profoundly this, like what's going on Lord. And so it's been, um, going and going in the last couple months. And it hasn't brought me into fear in those areas. It's brought me into, huh? Hmm. Okay. I see him. I see how you're doing this. I've had a couple talks with the Lord where I'm like, why do I keep hearing these voices? And like, so clearly, I don't even know when this was. I wrote it down. He said, because you're not hearing my voice enough. And I started taking communion more often again to remember his voice speak his blood speaks better things the bible says it specifically abel's voice abel's blood had a voice at the very first book of the entire bible he starts talking about it. life was in the blood his blood is a voice now we take his his body and his blood and they speak better things over our life so i've been doing that but i've been very very aware of this movement again over god's people in fact so many times i have wanted to get on facebook and just put out there please <clears throat> be vulnerable. And every single person who reads this, if you have had a suicidal thought, a thought of um, that something more of this, not really suicidal, because uh, <laughs> that's a whole other story. Basically thoughts about um, something horrible you're going to die of very, very soon. Very, very horrible. If you have thought that and since, like entertained that, put it, you put your name in here. And I just have this knowing inside of me that 90% of the people that I know, because it's so much bigger than we even wrap our head around, have fought these thoughts recently. Okay. So that's been going on. So Sunday night I was, um, sitting here, the girls, everybody had gone to bed and I was watching church. Um, I was watching, I was worshiping with Bethel at their Sunday night service. 
and um, I forget her name, stands up and starts talking about um, somebody she loved who had taken their life that week. And she just felt like the Lord showing her exactly the same thing that he'd been showing me. And she started releasing um, people from this bond, the way that, de that the demonic, because um, so many, we just, we just haven't learned. We haven't been taught how this works, but how the enemy has been throwing thoughts at us and how we've been taking them in a, as our own. And it is time to, to bring an end to this, this season of torment. So as she was speaking, I was crying. I'm like, this is what I've been trying to tell my family. Like, this is not me. This is demonic. And we've been speaking over it. We've been praising. And it, like I said, it's, it's more of like the things that I'm learning in my life. The way God uses me is to show me so that I can release his people. So although I walk through it, <laughs> um, it's, it's as if it's not happening to me always. I can't really describe it. So Sunday, I'm listening. I'm hearing all that. Um, so Haley Brown comes up and she starts ministering with the the group of um, her group that was just getting specific words for people and starts declaring them. Well, the last part of what she said, she said, is there an Elizabeth in the room? And inside everything like lit up. My name is not Elizabeth. I understand that. But I knew that word was for me. I like God just quickened that. And he showed me how years ago when I looked up my name, I, and the, the meaning behind it, cause I'd always had this plaque on my, um, on my dresser for my parents that said, Lisa consecrated to God, like oath of God. And I had realized that Elizabeth, Lisa is a shortened ver version of Elizabeth and they mean the same thing. And so she said Elizabeth and I was like, oh, cause I had just been crying out to God about, um, my, this own, which I'm going to share that in a different one. I need to share it, but something going on in my own life, um, that had been spoken over me a year and a half ago. And it's just been progressively, um, deteriorating. It's just been, it's been a battle. And I was talking to him about it and I just had been in this place of being so experienced in this torment that I know the world is experiencing. And she says, I have this, is there an Elizabeth here? this for me. And she starts speaking this word over this girl who is standing a couple rows in front of her. And I'm sobbing here. <laughs> They're in Redding, California. I'm in Lexington, South Carolina going, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. And um, this is the word she said. I saw the Lord touch your mouth with a coal. And I feel like there's a real prophetic grace on your life, a real prophetic anointing. I saw the Lord touching your mouth with a coal. And just like that, it feels like the Lord wants to break off hindrances. I feel like the Lord, Elizabeth, is going to meet you in the place where the enemy has tried to rob from you. And I feel like it is around your voice and the declarative word. I saw the Lord putting a coal to your lips and he has been cleansing and purifying you as you've been yielding to him and the fire of the Lord in this season. There is going to become a prophetic declaration that stirs inside of you and it is going to bring a shift. You are a woman of shift. You bring transition seasons. The Lord says you speak transition and you speak new chapters. You're a times and season prophetic gift on your life. And I am crying because so clearly the Lord has shown that to me already. And that's what I love about when people move in the prophetic with the, like the way the Holy Spirit designed it. It's so different than I ever understood. It's not calling out a new thing. Although there can be a time for that. The purpose of the prophetic is to encourage, to exhort, to build you up, to speak to you what's already been spoken to you by the Lord himself, to confirm that word. And the Lord has shown me for years this basically prophetic time clock that my life is and how there's things that he wants to show us in his word according to the time of life that we're in right now. And it happens to coincide with my life. And there's, I'm not the only one. This is, this has happened. This is, he is just, he's mind blowing, right? So I opened, I got that word and um, I just felt like yesterday when I had asked Jason to pray for me in the morning, I was like, I'm done with this. I'm done with the way the enemy is messing with me because there's cracks. Like we all have cracks. Like, so although I don't struggle with those obsessive thoughts about my children and car accidents and accidents at schools and all that, like, that's not something that, that's something that I recognized clearly was not me. In other areas, I do struggle. Nobody wants to die early as a, um, a mom. Nobody, oh, I just cry. Nobody wants to suffer like they see one another. Nobody wants to think they won't get to see their grandkids. Like, 
Nobody wants to entertain that, but those were the thoughts that were coming. And when there's cracks in there, I said, it's kind of like a road, like in Wisconsin in the winter, when, when the water gets in those cracks and then it freezes, it breaks it apart, right? And I felt like that's what the enemy has been wanting to do to all of us. He is throwing this junk out at us and seeing what sticks. That's the thing, seeing what sticks, right? So I was there and I was remembering this word that Haley Braun spoke that reminded me of this part of my life that God is using. And I went to Psalm 44. Um, if you watch my video, the last video, when he showed me, I'm, I'm 43. And so every Psalm, since I realized this, that like Psalm 36, he's used to speak um, into what is going on. So it was November 9th of this year that he showed me that actually my year starts November 3rd. Like my, I turned 44 in January but it's actually Psalm 44 now because of my spiritual birthday. You have to go back and watch that one. Um, so I flipped over into Psalm 44 and I was reading through it. Now he was specific on that day. On November 9th, showed me exactly what on that day was going on. So I, I start reading and this is yesterday, December 5th or December 15th, 2022. And I'm reading and I'm reading and I come to Psalm 44 verse 15. And like my mind explodes, the Lord jumped it off the page and it says, confusion is continually before me. The shame of my face has covered me because of the voice of him who reproaches and reviles because of the enemy and the avenger. All this has come on us. And it was like, he just picked it off the page and said, see, I told you, this is what's going on. This is the time. This, that word for um, confusion is also taunting insults. Um, it's just this, it's just this mind attack that is going on, right? And the shame, oh my gosh, I don't know how many sh people have been feeling shame, but I, you can look around and see how much people are blaming others and shaming others. And that screams exactly what they're feeling. So shame and confusion torment on our mind, right? It's come on all of us. And why? Because of the enemy, right? So in that moment, and that was the second time, and he's never before done this until this year. Second time in the exact date that it was going on, I I realized something mind-blowing. And suddenly he brought my eyes down, and I realized there's 26 verses in this chapter. And I felt him say in that moment, end it at 26. Start the new year at 27. This doesn't have to be the entire year. And so I stood here, and I said, this ends. We move on. On December 27th, it is the new year, and we start experiencing what you have for us next. And I'm crying. Like, I, I just can't even put this all into, um, man. Let's go to Psalm 45. Um, <laughs> sorry. Guys, we've heard about this. As long as I've lived, I've heard about what's coming. Um, some with fear, some with excitement, some with um, just desperation, really, to be done with what's going on here. But it, we all know that there's, there's more to come. Those of us that have put our hope in Jesus know he's going to come walk with us. He's going to lift us up from here. We're going to dwell with him forever. We're going to rule and reign on this earth in a way we've never known. Justice is going to be enforced. There's going to be no more babies dying. I'm oh, sorry. Before their time, there's going to be no people dying young. We're going to be living, living with the Lord. Oh man. I just can't get over what he's doing. So, <laughs> Psalm 45, uh -huh, which would have been my 45th year, which I thought was going to start 2024. Uh, I believe he's uh, called me to start it December 27th. That that's always been his desire. And I just want to read it to you. My heart is overflowing with a good theme. I recite my composition concerning the king. My tongue is the pen of a ready writer, holy speaking to me about life. You are fairer than the sons of men. Grace is poured upon your lips. Therefore, God has blessed you forever. Gird your sword upon your thigh, almighty one, with your glory and your majesty, and in your majesty ride prosperously because of the truth, humility, and righteousness. 
Your right hand shall teach you awesome things. Your arrows are sharp in the heart of the king's enemies. The peoples fall under you. Your throne, O God, is forever and ever. A scepter of righteousness is a scepter of your kingdom. Your love and righteousness, you love righteousness and hate wickedness. Therefore, God, your God, has anointed you with the oil of gladness more than your companions. All your garments are scented with myrrh and aloes and cassia out of the ivory palaces by which they have made you glad. Lord, this is a picture of Jesus. This is a picture of his grace and his beauty and he's riding this white horse and he is coming with his sword and his thigh. He is the right hand of God, right? Like, ah, his scepter, his righteousness, his throat, like this is him. And then it says, verse nine, king's daughters are among your honorable women. At your right hand stands the queen in gold. Listen, daughter, consider and incline your ear. Forget your people and your father's house. The king greatly desires your beauty because he is your Lord. Worship him. The daughter of Tyre will come with a gift. The rich among the people will seek your favor. Here we go. The royal daughter is glorious within the palace. <sighs> Her clothing is woven with gold. She shall be brought to the king in robes of many colors. The virgins, her companions who follow her, shall be brought to you with gladness and rejoicing. They shall be brought. They shall enter the king's palace. <laughs> Do you hear it? Psalm 46, God is our refuge and strength, our very present help in trouble. Therefore, we don't fear, even though the earth be removed. <sighs> and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea, its waters roar and troubled, though the mountain shake with swelling. <sighs> There's a river whose streams make glad the city of God. People, where are we? The holy place of the tabernacle of the Most High. God is in her midst. She will not be removed. God will help her just at the break of day. The nations raged, the kingdoms were moved, but he uttered his voice and the earth melted. <laughs> the Lord of hosts is with us.